In this data structure tutorial, we are going to look into how to handle collisions uh, in a hash table. In part one video, which if you have not seen already, I highly recommend you watch it. Uh, we implemented hash table in Python. We are going to take that class and we are going to enhance it to handle collision using separate chaining method. We'll also go over linear probing and in the end, we have a couple of interesting exercises for you to solve. Here in this picture, I have a hash map where the key is, for example, March 6 and the value is 310. Using hash function, we are finding appropriate index into our array. For example, here for March 6, I have index 9 and that value gets stored here. But when I get a collision, which means for some other key, let's say March 17, I also get the same index. What do I do here? I need to do some spatial handling because now two keys are trying to store their values at the same location. Here you, we can use an approach called separate chaining or chaining where instead of directly storing the value, we store a linked list or a list at every location. So first when March 6 came in, we appended this element into our linked list. Next time uh, when we have a collision and second element comes in, we just append it to that particular linked list. This way this linked list can keep on growing and multiple keys can share the same hash value. The big O analysis here will be that usually for average case uh, hash map search complexity is order of one which is a constant time but in this case it might go up till order of n because imagine if you have a bad hashing function and all the elements all the keys generate same index then you will have all of your values stuck in one bucket and this will be a long linked list so in that case the search complexity is same as the complexity of a linked list which is order of n and when now i want to return value of march 17 first i use hash function to get an index which is 9 i go to index number 9 then i linearly search this linked list and for that reason it is important to have your key stored in each of these elements so that you know uh, which value is associated with which key. The second approach for solving the collision is called linear probing. Here what we do is when for March 17 we get an index 9 and we find that there is already a value stored at this location we go to the next available location. Here my array is ending here, but let's say if there was a 10th location which was empty, then I would store March 17 at 10th location. But since I don't have 10th location, I will go reverse, look at 0th location. That location is also filled out. So then I go to location number 1. And here I store my March 17 value. It is called linear probing because I am linearly Probing means searching for an empty slot to store my key value pair. I have another example where March 18 resolved to index 0. There was already a value, so we went to index number 1. That is also filled, so now you store your value at index number 2. Now let's implement chaining in Python. Here I have a Python class that we implemented in part 1 of this tutorial, and this class is not handling collision. All it is doing is getting a hashing function and when you do get item or set item it will go to particular index in your array and store the value i'll show you what problem uh, this class will have so here i have a get hash function being called for march 6 and march 17 and you know that they both have the same index so when i store values like this for march 6 i have value 120 march 17 it is 459 but since March 17 has the same index, it would have overwritten the value for March 6. Hence, when I say, get me a value of March 6, I am getting 459. See, I stored 120, but I am getting 459. And that is because of collision, because March 17, this 459 value overwrote that. So now we are going to fix that collision in this same class here. The first thing I'm going to do is instead of initializing none as individual element I will initialize empty array because now the each element is not just the value we are storing key value pair 
So if you remember from our first presentation, uh, we store key value pair uh, whenever we have collision so that we can locate the right element. That's why I'm having array uh, in each individual element. The get hash function remains the same. Uh, we don't need to change that. We are now going to implement set item function. In our original implementation, we used to overwrite the value at index h, but at index h, now we have a linked list. So we need to iterate through the linked list and find the, find the right location uh, to update our value. So the first thing we'll do is, in our linked list, is, is this element already exist? So it could happen that you might already have March 6 in your location and you, you will be like, okay, March 6, let's update the value with something else. For example, here, if you have something like this, where initially you inserted March 6, but then next time you want to update the same value, okay, for that key. So we are going to handle this particular case first. So let's uh, iterate through it. Now, before we iterate through it, let me show you a simple case. So let's assume that at this index, uh, this particular key does not exist. In that case, what you will do is simply in that linked list. So this, this particular thing, this one is a linked list or in Python, we are just using a list here. You want to update key value pair. This will be our simple scenario, but that you will do it only if the key does not exist in that linked list. Hence, you want to first find out if key exists or not. All right. So you will say for index element in. So enumerate is a function you use to iterate through the elements in your array. And if the length of element is equal to two and element zero is equal to key which means for this key i already have an element so that element you just change a value so in that same element you will change a value but since we are inserting a tuple our tuples are immutable so i cannot just say element one is equal to value you know instead of tuple if you had used another array it might have worked so i'm just going to uh, insert a new tuple basically at the same location so my location is first of all this and in that on that particular index i will store this key value location i hope it makes sense if this is a little complex i would suggest you debug this in pycharm and when you step through the code you will get an exit idea of what i'm trying to do here and this is found equal to true so if that happens uh, the found thing becomes true and you break out of the loop okay so let me break out of the loop so found element is false initially okay and then you do this thing if your element was not found which means i did not have this key in my hash table that's why i'm inserting it fresh but this scenario is to handle if the key already existed and if it already exists uh, you are just modifying uh, that key value pair okay so i hope that makes sense uh, let me just run it so i did control enter and it executed it now i'm gonna do let's say this okay so let me remove this two thing so that one is gone so here i created a hash table object and here i'm inserting couple of values and in the previous implementation march 6 was showing 459 so let's see so here this is working correct i mean i don't have get item implemented that's why it showed like this but you can see that at that location now it is storing a link list if you want to get a better idea you can just print this array see in this array now 
every element is a list and that list has a key value pair. So marks 6 and 17 uh, give a hash of index 9. So I'm at index 9 and here I have stored all these elements. So now I can modify my get function. In the get function, what I'll do is I, I first get the index and then I iterate through all the values in that index and I try to return uh, the value uh, that matches this particular key. So let's modify our get item function. This part remains the same. You always want to get the hash. So for example, just visualize you are calling get item for mars 6 or mars 17. In that case, uh, this hash uh, h will return value 9. Okay. And when you have a 9, now when I do self dot array h, okay, this particular thing returns me this list, this whole list it will return. So now I go want to go through each of these elements in the list by running a for loop and find out the appropriate value. So I will say for element in this if element zero is equal to key all right so i want to say key all right so let me just change this to key so for that key which is mass 6 17 whatever if that matches you return element of one see element zero is this key which we are matching if it matches return the second part which is the value itself all right so this looks good uh, if it cannot find the uh, value then it will return none so when you don't return anything in python by de default it uh, returns none so control enter this thing is executed control enter again control enter control enter so i have these values now let me do this march 17 or march 6 See, mass 6 is coming 78, which is the correct value. And when you do mass 17, it will be 459. So now this is working. This fixed the problem that we had with the previous implementation of hash table. Let's also implement a delete item function. So delete item can be implemented by overriding this method. These are all the Python standard operators. Okay. So delete item, uh, whenever you want to delete a key, uh, as usual, first you will get uh, self dot get hash for a key, and then for index key value in enumerate enumerate what self dot array of h. Because when you want to delete something, let's say you want to delete March seventeen you first locate the index which is number nine so then you get this list so this list is this particular thing this is that list now you go through each of these elements in the list so i'm iterating this loop you can see that and whenever you find a particular element let's say i find mars 17 that is something that you want to delete so here if uh, instead of kv i will just use element okay if element of zero because zero always have a key is equal to key then we found the right element to delete and here you will say delete self dot array h okay and at that h i want to delete this particular index so this h Let's say if you're trying to delete March 17, this H will be number nine. Okay, so number nine is this. In that, we have another list and the index to delete in that list is one because this is zero, this is one. So one we want to delete, so that index is one. Okay, control enter. So this executes this, control enter, control enter. So I'm executing all of this and now let's say delete I want to delete March 17. Okay, it executed fine without any complaints, but let's see if it worked really. 
voila now this is working see march 6 march 17 you can also delete march 6 and see what happens so march 6 here control enter and then t dot array t dot array see march 6 is also gone that was the last element you had now when you try to retrieve the value of march 6 of course it's gonna return none but you have other elements such as march 9 for example whose value is 4 so when you do march 9 you get value 4 back so this hash table seems to be working okay now comes the most interesting part of these tutorials which is an exercise without doing this exercise it's all useless guys believe me so you have to work on these exercises i have solution links but you will click on solution link only after you have tried it yourself all right so i have uh, four different exercises the fourth exercise is little complex uh, where i am asking you to implement a uh, linear probing in your hash table but if you have already watched this particular tutorial on how to implement using chaining i think you can get some insights from that so just take that same class and modify it and there are some other exercises so read through the description and try to solve uh, these problems i'm also providing csv files for example here now many times people ask me that okay how do i download this csv file so to download my entire repository what you should do is you should go to the root which is py okay so go here and when you say clone or download this way you can download the entire repository with all my tutorials and in data structure so if you go inside data structure see i have all these different tutorials in hash table collisions when you go here um, in the solution i have uh, this csv file poem.txt etc so when you clone the entire repository by going to pi clicking on this green button you will get those files okay so get those files work on those exercises and post your solutions in a video comment below you can also match your solution with my solution by clicking on this link uh, but first try it out yourself so thank you for watching i hope the this two-part video series on hash map has clarified your doubts remember data structures is a hot topic when it comes to programming interviews or data science data analyst interviews so having in-depth understanding of data structure is very very important hence it's very much needed that you watch this whole data structure tutorial series you work on these exercises you get an idea on the big o analysis between different data structures link for the exercise this link and the code that i went through those links are provided in video description so always check video description for any of my videos i provide ton of useful information there